guys, my name is Kate and I'm the Go Kids director here at Monterey Church. I wanna welcome you to Go Kids. So wherever you might be watching from, maybe you are in your PJs right now, maybe you're getting ready for lunch, or you just had breakfast. Wherever you're watching from, I am so excited that you're here. So let's pray and then get started. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for just every single person who is watching, Lord. I pray that this uh, would just be just glorifying to you, that, that we would just learn more about you and just your story and just the love that you have for us, Lord. So I thank you for today and I pray all these things in your name, amen. All right, let's get started. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus, we know we've been long here because of your love from us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go. How's it going everybody? My name is Graham. Let's talk a little bit about confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. So confidence is a good thing, but it's one thing to say, you should have more confidence. And it's another thing to actually be confident. How exactly can you be confident? 
If you want to have confidence, first, you need to learn how to focus. It's like when you're learning music, especially when you play an instrument. If you don't focus on the beat or the rhythm, you're gonna be all over the place. This is a metronome. Musicians use them to help them keep the beat. If you focus on the metronome, you'll stay steady. Watch. So relaxing. Now, I'll play my song with the right rhythm. Wow, focusing really works. It helps me be more confident because I'm able to put my trust in something steady, something I can depend on. So in today's story, one of Jesus' disciples gets to do something amazing as long as he doesn't lose focus. As for me, I'll be here waiting for you to get back. See how focused I am? See you very soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Jesus and his friends had reached the end of a long day and they were exhausted. Get in the boat. Go ahead to the other side of the lake. Oh, wait a second. Aren't you coming too? I must send the crowd home. Well, all right. Andrew, James, John, let's get a move on. That very morning, Jesus had received terrible news. His cousin, John the Baptist, had been killed by King Herod. Wishing to be alone, he and the other disciples took the boat and went across the other side of the lake. But people followed, and later that day, Jesus fed more than 5,000 people with only five loaves of bread and two fish. So, bro, is Jesus going to meet up with us later or what? He didn't say. Peter and Andrew and the other disciples climbed into the boat. Nice breeze. Yeah, but it's uh, picking up. Should we wait? Jesus said go, so we go. No? Yeah, bro. The disciples set off across the Sea of Galilee, rocked by a gentle wind. Finally, the crowds dispersed. At last, Jesus was alone. He climbed up high on the mountainside and poured out his heart to his father. Father. As evening turned to night and night stretched toward morning, the wind across the lake grew wild. Instead of reaching land, the disciples were tossed back and forth on the rising waves. We're taking on water! Bail it out. James and John, you take the stern. Andrew and I have the bow. The wind and waves continued to pound the small boat. The disciples could barely see through the spray. Hey, Peter, what's that? What's what? I see you too. See what? Come back here. Peter staggered to the back of the boat. Everyone looked out into the gloom to try to figure out what this murky shape was that was coming toward them on the stormy sea. It's... it's a ghost. Oh! Help us! Save We're gonna us. die! But even as the men began to panic, the figure called out to them. Be brave. It is I. Don't be afraid. Peter fixed his gaze on the figure. Lord, is it you? The man came straight toward them, walking on the surging water as if it were a smooth, sandy beach. If it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. Come. Now everyone stared at Peter. You can't walk on water, bro. But Jesus can. Taking a deep breath, Peter grabbed the plunging side of the boat and then 
threw his legs over the side. And possibly, he stood up on the water. Whoa, this is crazy. Peter locked his eyes on Jesus, the only solid, stable thing in the storm-tossed sea. He took a step, then another step, and a third step. But at that moment, Peter caught sight of a monstrous wave at the edge of his vision. He turned his gaze toward the monstrous wall that threatened to crush him. No! Instantly, Peter lost his footing. The water sucked him down and whipped him around. Lord, save me! Immediately, Jesus reached out and grabbed Peter's hand. Your faith is so small. Why did you doubt me? Jesus firmly helped Peter back into the boat. Then he got in too. The wind died down and the water became smooth as glass. Jesus' friends sank down in the wet deck of the boat and stared at him in awe. You really are the Son of God. Free of the storm, the boat sailed smoothly across the water, guided by a gentle breeze. As day broke, Jesus and his friends landed at Gennesaret. After a night, they would never forget. Let me just say, if I haven't said it before, Jesus is amazing. He could actually walk on water and he helped Peter too. Think of how much confidence Peter had to have in Jesus to step out of that boat. He must have been super focused. But then something happened to Peter that happens to us sometimes. He got distracted. He took his focus off Jesus and focused on his problems instead. For Peter, his problems were the wind and the waves and the storm. Your problem could be you're distracted because a vacation got canceled or something didn't go the way you expected. Your problem might be that you or someone you love is sick. Or maybe your family isn't getting along with one another. If you want to have confidence when storms like that happen, you gotta stay focused. It's probably best if you don't try to walk on water, but you should try to stay focused on Jesus. Now, we can't focus on Jesus the way Peter did with his eyes, but we can focus on him by learning about Jesus from the Bible. We can learn the things Jesus said and the things he did, and we can try to live and love like him. Now, the one thing to remember today is this. Stay focused on Jesus. Put your trust in someone steady, someone you can depend on. Maybe this classic song will help you remember. This is called Jesus Loves Me. I'll see you next time. Bye.